Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Moore, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, you got a lot of cross currents kind of going on here. Um, chart kind of chart one's kind of messy, but let's try to get through it. Okay, cool. We'll take a quick, quick yep. look at it. Okay, we got it. I have it. All right, all right. Uh, I like your messy charts, by the way, Tim. There's a lot of good information in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, some, sometimes I try to cover too much, and you can't see the forest through the trees, you know. But anyhow. Um, uh, get in a nutshell, you know, we, we had a decline into uh, early August, and the reason why that area became, we kind of blew through that area a little bit, but that light blue area, I shaded in light blue, yes. was the times when the trend was around 1.2 or higher, and 1.2 or higher on the trend is panic, and panic only forms at lows. So anyhow, that area was basically between 520 to 540 general. We went a little bit below it was supposed to be a, a, a support area. And in a nutshell, it kind of worked. Um, it blew through it. Actually, uh, two days is all. But anyhow, I did find support in that region. I'll put it that way. Yes. And the market rallied up. And um, it was up uh, like eight days in a row. That predicts the market will be higher within five days. I don't know, big percentage of the time, like 90% of the time. Well, yesterday we did close at a new high, barely. But... If you notice, uh, the SPs made higher, not counting today, but the SPs made higher, or uh, anyhow, went higher from Monday. Yes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And if you notice, you go down to the bottom window, which is the SPX ratio. Okay. It actually, yeah, it went down. Look at and, that thing, uh, huh? Wow. I love this yeah, ratio, so, Tim. This ratio is something yeah. else, man. It really picks things up. Holy cow. Yeah, and actually, you know, I wanted to tell you, too, uh, we, we got a buy signal on August 5th, which is basically a day of the low. The reason why I kept that position, because the VIX every day made a lower low. as long, And the VIX kind of leads the, uh, which is the second window up from the bottom. I see. And, uh, okay, I see that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, if you kind of blow it, it's kind of hard to see there because the VIX just totally blew out at August 5th. It went up so high, it kind of made everything kind of unreadable. But I watch the VIX every day. As long as the VIX closed at a, a new uh, short-term low and the SP closed at a short-term high, I kept that position. Nice. And so as re the reason why I, I, uh, there's a there was a gap of... Uh, around 540, went into that gap on lighter volume. And it's okay, that's a very sign, but the VIX made a lower low that day, so I kept, even though we went through that gap on lighter volume, I kept that because the VIX made a lower low. So anyhow, uh, the VIX is, uh, has a lot of information, but if you notice, you can't quite see it, but the next window up, uh, the second window up from the bottom is the VIX, and the VIX has started to go up as the SPs were going up, and that's a very sign. And uh, one of the reasons kind of kept out of that position. So um, right now you got the market kind of turning around here. We did test the gap off the July high. And if you compare the volume, you can, which is I tried to do here, that purple area. Okay, I uh, see it. Yeah. Yeah. If you go, yeah. If you go down to the volume and compare the volume where it happened, where that gap formed off the July high, which is that purple area. Okay. Yes. Shared area. And you compare that volume uh, to when we got into the gap, you can see it's a little bit lighter. And that's the reason why that gap had resistance. Yes. And the VIX started to go up, too. So that was quite a bit of reason. Uh, well, you know what's amazing, that Tim? That, that one so. trade, that one trade. And, folks, okay, if you're watching Tiger TV, i got to put this over here, man, because I'm telling you, man, I said this Tuesday, but i got to reiterate this because yeah, check this out, folks, okay? What Tim's talking about. Okay, so here's, here's the fear, okay? The fear was generated on the 5th. That's when Tim got his buy signal, okay? And I'll just use the closing price. Closing price is 517, okay? Well, the bottom line is that he got out two days ago, which is 557. <laughs> I mean, you talk about, that could be one trade for the whole year, Tim. I mean, you yeah. know. <laughs>
Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, it's was, just, it's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, actually, uh, what really increased my, I, I don't know, I, uh, yeah. What put, put to like what gave me more confidence to stay in, in the trades yeah. I do is because of the VIX. Right. The VIX on a on a daily basis really puts a lot of information on the trades you go in. Like I said, you know, I got long on the fifth. Yeah. The only reason why I kept that position because the VIX kept going down. Right. And uh, and finally it started wow. to go up, and I'm thinking, okay, we're we're getting close to a high here. So, uh, you know, that was that was a really a, a, a yeah. It takes a little bit of I don't know. I guess you have to play with it uh, for a while to figure out what what the key is, but it does give a lot of information. So no, but, I you can know, see that. You know what happens too visually, Tim? It's amazing. I mean, if you saw this, you know, when you're taking a look at this, folks, if you see with visually that you know the 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 spy slash vix ratio, man, I mean that's pretty intense in itself. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like, visually, when that turns, you can really see it. It's like, whoa, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm visual, you know. Yes. I can't comprehend anything in writing, but put put it on a picture. Yeah. You know, I, I can make sense out of and it. And you're cooking. So, I like it. And, That's right. Uh, yeah. So technical analysis, as long as I can see what, what's going on, I can make my conclusions a lot better than actually reading it out of a book. But, but anyhow, this, we don't have a lot of time here, but yeah, flip to chart two. Okay. We're here. Yeah. Uh, in a nutshell, I think... If you look back in uh, August 2020, which is that possible scenario I got there on the bottom window. Yes, I see that. I, yep. I, I got it squared got out. Got it squared, yep. I bet, I bet before this thing's all over, that's what it's going to look like. Right. Uh, just just because we've got a lot of similarities. I forget what they all were. But there's several different similarities between August of 2020 in August of 2024, uh, you know, we pretty much had to uh, hear the music. That's all right. So. Just stay right there. Folks, we'll be coming right back. Tim Ord, Tom O'Brien. Don't forget, you can hold the Tim any tra every trading day at Ord, R-D-Oracle.com. We have the Dow trading down 236. NASDAQ's off 285. S&Ps are down 51. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oy, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow off 206, NASDAQ down 288, S&P's off 49. And if you are trading those NQs, the NQs just broke that low and broke them with volume. Whereas the, uh, the E-minis didn't, folks, okay? So it's going to get interesting watching this uh, close out here because we blew through that low, and now we get another high-volume low. We're talking about our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and we are talking markets. I have the, the second shot up, Tim. Yeah, so anyhow, I'm thinking what's going to happen is, you know, we had the zig down, down to the August 5th low, then we had a rally up that retraced almost 100% of the previous decline. Yes. Which is similar to what happened back there. Then now I think, in general, we're going to go back down again. So if we flip to chart one. Okay. Uh, here's probably, you know, gaps are like tops. Right. If you hit a, if you hit, if you hit a gap on lighter volume, it's going to be resistance. And if you go down into a gap, you do so on uh, actually has to be ten percent or lighter volume. It's going to be support. So I'm thinking, you know, there is there's a gap down around five forty, uh, which I got you know scenario down to there. But I think we're actually going to go all the way back down to five twenty, hit that gap down there. And, uh, you know, time will tell. Do I got a real clear signal here? Not really. Um, but, you know, market, a lot of times markets, tops are put it this way, a little bit harder than bottoms. Yes. Bottoms, they blow out. All right. Everybody's scared and how bad it is. And you just try to pick the worst scenario you, you can find in the market. And buy and it. Buy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, and you close your eyes and go have a beer somewhere. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, on, on tops, you know, they, they go down. Sometimes they come back at you, try to yeah. knock you out, whatever. And so I don't know. Well, uh, this will be quite a I consolidation. I mean, I, 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 my, my, I'm with you at 8,000%, man. Mm -hmm. This high-volume low wants to get tested. What a consolidation yeah. this would be, though, man. This... Folks, this would be like a trader's paradise <laughs> if if the consolidation in the spy is like from five sixty five to five twenty. I mean, seriously, right? That'd be yeah. so sweet. Yeah, it, 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 you know, we'll have to wait and see. But you know, we'll be talking in maybe a month from now. Oh, yeah. Basically five twenty. So we'll just have to see. All right. But uh, but anyhow, you know, usually a lot of times gaps get get filled, and so if they they form, you kind of watch them, mark them, and 
and a lot of times uh, they come back to them. So we'll right. see. But we got we got a lot of panic in that region. Yes. So you know because uh, that's that blue area. And another thing, you know, on your previous show on Tuesday, we talked about the Zwag Breast Thrust Indicator. That's right. It did get triggered on yep. uh, from my ex. It went from August 5th to August 19th. Right. That was 10 trading days, and that uh, was triggered went from 0.4 to 0.62, I think it was. Yes, it was. So uh, sometimes you get you know, the market stalls. Sometimes it kind of keeps chugging higher. But that Zwag Breast Thrust Indicator only comes at – in bull markets. So this is not a start of a big decline. And also, when you got the RSI hitting 80 on a daily, it's, it's never the final high either. So, but they can, you know, come up like uh, consolidation, like a bid, bid, uh, sure. bid uh, it did back in, in 2020 in the August period. So, And you know what's so cool see. here, folks, is that because we get that, well, as, as Tim's teaching us, you, you get the fear that's taking place. The fear is down it basically at the 420 area. Now, it's going to be so cool this time, Tim. 520. Uh, I'm sorry, what? 520, yeah. Yeah, Five, 520. <laughs> yeah, 520, you're right. Uh, what's so cool is that we already know what the volume is down there, folks, okay? So it'd be so cool if you get the panic again, but then we get lighter volume. When you put that together, that would be the buy again. And then you don't know where the sell would come because of the Zweig indicator, which would be so cool, Tim. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay... You know, it comes down to test it. Just that in itself would be like, okay, this is pretty cool. But you very well could catch, really catch a low. You know what I'm saying? We don't know that yet, folks, okay? But I'm just trying to set that up so that different things that Tim uses, which is so cool, is that you could use what has happened in the past to check your work as it's coming into those areas again, which is huge, huge. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so, I, so I'm thinking, you know, that if we go back to chart two again, you know, that possible scenario scenario. See, all that did was the market didn't retrace, you know, Fibonacci wise zero. You know, if you look at that trading range where I got it boxed in red, yes, red square. You know, Fibonacci it didn't retrace anything. And if you look at our current chart, you know, I guess you can't quite see, but this sideways move that's been going on since June. You know, we rallied up, came back down, rallied back up. We're building a sideways trading range here. Right. And it's probably going to be the halfway point of the next move up when it, you know, finishes. Yes. So, uh, so actually, let's go to chart because I got a monthly chart. You can see a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Flip to chart three. I have it. So what I'm saying is that this trading, if you look at where we currently are, this is a monthly chart. And, uh, you know, I, I got a line that's poured around, looks like about 520, I don't know, it's, it's hard to see, maybe 530. Hey, I, I drew a trend line off the previous highs back in April, May, I see it, June yes, I see it. Thing there, yep. those tops. So we went down and hit it, maybe we come back down again. But Fibonacci-wise, you know, that's just a shallow retracement. Right. Compared to the, you know, you take off the, you know, you start uh, Fibonacci, uh, uh, start, what do you call it, the October low of last year, you pretty much had an impulse wave straight up. So you take, you start with a Fibonacci level at that level to the high we had here yes. you know, currently, and you do a Fibonacci retracement, you know, you're looking, I don't know, 25% retracement maybe, yep. you know, eyeballing it, you know. And so that's a shallow retracement. And if the market can't go, you know, even pull back a decent amount, this this area we're screwing around with right now, in my opinion, could be the halfway point of the next move up. Right. So if that proves to be true, we'll have to wait and see. But um, pretty you know, cool on a bigger time frame. It looks it looks really good. It, it, it you know it's, uh, we're we're getting into a a seasonality period. It's not real favorable for the market. A lot of times you get you know, chop back and forth, you know, September, October. Uh, that's the reason why I think we well, there's a good chance we pull back over the next, you know, 30, 50 days, whatever, or, you know, next month or so. Uh, just because this is ideal time if you're going to consolidate seasonality-wise, this is a perfect time to do it. Yes. Then we, uh, then we build strength because we're going to build probably more trend readings above 1.2 if we do get the pullback, building strength for the next rally up so we'll have to see if that and more than likely come in right into that same range again 
where the trend went up the last time and the time before yeah. that. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. So once you start seeing a panic area on the trend, once you go back into it, you should see it again. If you don't, that's not a good sign. But most times you do, or I, I don't know, 80, 90 percent of the time you do. Sure. So and really and if you don't, folks, is. that means we're going lower, which is worse. <laughs> stay, yeah. stay right there. Tim and I come right back, folks. We have the Dow down 197. Nasdaq's off 292. S&Ps are off 48. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your corral and problem with us out here. We have the Dow of 200, Nasdaq down 296, S&Ps are off 50, and we are on chat number three, Tim. The thing I want to point out uh, is uh, the bottom window is that SPX fix ratio. Yes. If you notice, last month we made a higher high. Yep. And the, uh, compared to the previous month, so that would be June to July. If you notice, that ratio went down. Yes. So that yeah, it just kind of reinforces uh, the indicator. That was on a monthly time frame. So um, so anyhow, let's move on. Let's okay. Chart four. Yes, I have it. Yeah, actually, I, I didn't know we had this on here, but anyhow, yeah. Chart four is that Zwag breath thrust indicator is kind of a repeat. The Zwag breath thrust indicator only shows up in bull markets. You don't find them in bear markets. So if the market's going down. And you'll see a Zwag breath thrust indicator, you know, triggering. And it's going to go down more. But I've labeled over the last uh, couple of years uh, where they were. And again, we we had one off the the August fifth up to the August nineteenth. We had a Zwag breath thrust indica indicator it got triggered. Uh, so we're in a bull market. You know what's going to happen in a bad seasonality period. You know we'll have to wait and see. But I'm betting on a pullback here. But I haven't bet real money on it yet so i'm kind of waiting so but my my analysis i i think it's going to look like august of 2020 no and i can so, see that and what happens on a longer term basis folks that doesn't even look like a pullback which is amazing but i remember that you know yeah. I, I can see that happening right you know it's because it makes sense consolidate yeah. a bit market gets stronger right you know bottom line and then you know flips everyone out and decides to take another leg up <laughs> i love it right yeah, so, and, you know, if it does pull back, which I think it will, you know, that trend, you know, the 10-day trend, you know, right now I think we're right around 0.9 or, or 0.89 yes. 10-day trend, which is not ideal. They can still go up, but, you know, you like to see that up around one point higher, actually, if you can get it up, you know, a 10-day trend up around two, that's a lot of fear in the market, and that would imply to get that fear off it would have to rally for a longer period of time right so the higher that number is the more fear is in the market that would imply uh, the rally could go higher so if we do pull back here which i think we will in that 10-day trend gets up to 1.5 1 1.7 or something that's a lot of that's a lot of fuel to drive the market higher into year end so yes we'll, we'll see how that happens or not what's up so okay let's take a look at let's take a look at gold market okay i have it um Chart five? Yes, I do. I have it. Yep. Chart five. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, kind of just to repeat, the short-term trend is up. This is kind of an intermediate term trend. The bottom window is a 50-day average of the up-down volume uh, for GDX with a 50-day average. So that's like two and a half months of data. And as long as that data stays above zero, the uptrend's intact. There's another indicator right above it which is the uh, advanced decline, 50-day average advanced decline, but doesn't work as well as the up-down volume. And I don't know why, don't really care, uh, but the up-down volume is the one to pay attention to. And right now, uh, the market's uh, GDX is, is, is setting at a short-term high, and this indicator is, is uh, uh, most of the, today was uh, plus 14 and change. 1475, maybe I can't quite read it, but it's you know, it's way above zero. As long as that indicator holds above zero, the uptrend's intact, and all that light uh, green area across the charts are times when that indicator was above zero. So we still may push higher, it's kind of choppy up so far, uh, but not seeing any real danger signs. Um, you know, I marked on on the top window there. I think there was a head and shoulders bottom that formed. Yes, I can see that. I can see the head yeah. and shoulders. If you has them marked, you know, it's pretty cool too, Tim. Like today, folks. Okay, I mean, the gold market itself. You know, it's getting whacked. It's down twenty nine dollars. Now it has lighter volume that's going into, but it did 
fail to hold those last four tops that we saw. So it's pretty cool that the GDX is holding up because the GDX actually is going to have light volume today, much lighter than it had basically, you know, on the way up. And it rejected lower price, it rejected 38.54. You know, I mean, we're only 30 cents higher than that, but that's pretty impressive with the gold contract not holding those highs. You know what I'm saying, Tim? So pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. It's a, actually, let's look at the short term for exactly what you're talking about. So you're talking about volume, which is really good. Uh, this is in, uh, the top windows GDX, which is basically matching as high of uh what mid july there yes and if you notice that uh, next window down is a cumulative up down volume so right it's not a 50 day average it's a cumulative daily volume yes and it blew away it blew through that previous high of uh, mid july right so you know, you're now you got volume showing bullish signs doing an analysis of you know uh up down volume or uh volume compared to up days down days now you got up down volume compared to what's happening so there's there's really no divergences going on right if you look back in yep. uh december of 2023 that that's that pink area i got shown there yes i uh, see that yep you know okay uh, top one is gdx gdx is making higher highs next window down we see that up down volume made lower highs and my point is we got the opposite of that. We're, we're matching the previous highs of mid-July, and that up-down volume is making way higher highs, showing there's right. volumes way outpacing down volume. So to me, that's a, a bullish divergence, I guess. And um, you know, ultimately, I, I think uh, we're, we're going to keep going higher. Uh, yes. So not really showing any short-term signs of, of uh, kind of exhaustion that we've on the short term. So okay. yeah, it looks good. And then I have the last shot up. Yeah, last chart. This is always you always got to watch the bigger view. Right. The you know, bigger view rules the rules the intermediate view, view and the intermediate view rules the uh, rules the short term view. Yes. But there, you know, you got to have the big view on your sites. And back in January 2021, the top window, which is the monthly cumulative up down volume. And that's all it is. Uh, it's cumulative, and I put a Bollinger Band with it. Gave a sell signal back in January of 2021. Stayed on a sell signal until May of this year. Gave a buy signal, and you know it's a clear buy signal. We're up. Uh, the monthly charts are definitely in an uptrend. You can have some consolidations, but it shouldn't be anything significant. Uh, you know, other than right. You know, uh, choppiness, uh, whatever. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, but it shouldn't be any tops. I, I guess. You know, if you just took this chart and traded the monthly chart, you'd be you'd do very well over the long term. But you know, we're still gaining ground. This monthly chart, from month to month, since uh, well, basically May thirty first, has basically stayed up, and we're keep making monthly higher highs. Uh, and the bottom window is the cumulative advanced decline of, of the uh, adva advanced decline, not the up down volume, but it, it also is matching higher highs. As the up down volume is matching higher highs, so uh, yeah, because this thing's been going, it's period. been gone for six months now. I mean, I just went back six months in the GDX. It was twenty five dollars and sixty seven cents. Yeah, pretty cool, man. Twenty five to thirty eight, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah I wonder how high we're going to go, you know. But I, I'm thinking this is is going to be like two thousand, two thousand. So we'll have to wait and see. We'll we'll talk a year from now. So, yeah, I, I hope I hope we're it. talking in the four seasons, Tim. <laughs> yeah. So. Tim, you have a great weekend, a safe weekend. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. All right, love you guys. Love you. Thanks, have man. One. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.